have it because I'm going to read it. Oh, very good, very good. Very yeah, good. but I wanted you to go ahead and finish. You said Ambassador, you got this from Ambassador Sondland. Uh, that is correct. Um, that um, Ambassador Sondland also said that he talked to President Zelensky and Mr. Yermak and had told them that although this was not a quid pro quo, if President Zelensky did not clear things up in public, we would be at a stalemate. That was, the, that was one point. Um, it was also uh, the case... Mr. Morrison talked to you, right? No. Uh, what I was going to say is that Ambassador Sondland also told me that he recognized that it was a mistake to have told the Ukrainians that only the meeting with the uh, president in the, in the Oval Office was held up on the, uh, in order to get these investigations. No, it was not just the meeting, it was also the security system. That is everything. So those two, those okay. two discussions. No, I understand. Um, okay. All right. So again, just to just to recap, you had three meetings with President Zelensky. No linkage in those three meetings came up. Ambassador Zelensky didn't announce that he was going to do any investigation of the Biden's or Burismas before the aid was released. He didn't was, do a tweet. Didn't do anything on CNN. Didn't do any of that. President Zelensky, excuse me. Right. Um, and then what you have in front of you is an addendum that Mr. Sondland made to his testimony that we got a couple weeks ago. It says declaration of Ambassador Gordon Sondland. I, Gordon Sondland, do hereby swear and affirm as follows. I want you to look at point number two, bullet point number two, second sentence. Ambassador Taylor recalls that Mr. Morrison told Ambassador Taylor that I told Mr. Morrison that I conveyed this message to Mr. Yarmack on September 1st, 2019, in connection with Vice President Pence's visit to Warsaw and a meeting with President Zelensky. But this is his clarification. Let me read it one more time. Ambassador Taylor recalls that Mr. Morrison told Ambassador Taylor that I told Mr. Morrison that I conveyed this message to Mr. Yarmouk on September 1st, 2019, in connection with Vice President Pence's visit to Warsaw and a meeting with President Zelensky. We got six people having four conversations in one sentence, and you just told me this is where you got your clear understanding. Which, I, I mean, even though you had three opportunities with President Zelensky for him to tell you, you know what? We're going to do these investigations to get the aid. Didn't tell you three different times. Never makes an announcement. Never tweets about it. Never does a CNN interview. Ambassador, you weren't on the call, were you? The president, you didn't listen on President Trump's call and President Lissy's call? I did not. You never talked with Chief of Staff Mulvaney? I never did. You never met the president? That's correct. You had three meetings again with Zelensky and it didn't come up? And two of those they had never heard about as far as I know. And president there was Lissy, no reason for it. President Zelensky never made an announcement. This, this is what I can't believe. And you're their star witness. You're their first witness. But you're the going, guy. You're the guy. Based on this, based on, I mean, I've seen, I've seen church prayer chains that are easier to understand than this. Ambassador Taylor recalls that Mr. Morrison told. Now again, this is I hereby swear and affirm from Gordon Sondland. Ambassador Taylor recalls that Mr. Morrison told Ambassador Taylor that I told Mr. Morrison that I conveyed this message to Mr. Yarmouk on September 1st, 20. This all happens, by the way. This all happens, by the way, in Warsaw, where Vice President Pence meets with President Zelensky. And guess what? Taylor. They didn't talk about any linkage either. Time the gentleman's expired. Ambassador Taylor, would you like to respond? The only response, uh, two responses, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. And Mr. Mr. Gordon, glad to take those questions. Let me just say um, that I don't consider myself a star witness for anything. They do. You know no, that. Uh, I don't. I, I'm just... I'm responding to uh, I'm responding to your questions. Um, as I, I I think I was clear about I'm not here to take one side or the other or to advocate any particular outcome. So let me just re restate that. Second thing is that uh, my understanding is only coming from people that I talk to. We got that. Uh, uh, we got that. Um, and um, I think this clarification uh, from Ms., uh, from Ambassador Sondland. Um, was because he said he didn't remember this in, the, in, in his first deposition. So he, he wanted to kind of clarify. But I think, Mr. Jordan, it, re, I, the way I read this, he remembers it the same way I do. Yeah, and it's real clear, right? It's Thank very clear. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Taylor. Um, Mr. Hunt, you recognize for five minutes. Gentlemen, thank you for your testimony today. One of the things I find startling about these proceedings is that faced with very serious allegations of presidential misconduct, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle don't engage or defend that conduct. Rather, they spin theories about black ledgers and steel dossiers and the startling revelation that Ukrainians might have been upset when a presidential candidate suggested that perhaps he would let 
the Russians keep Crimea. Or, of course, we get the attacks so epitomized by Mr. Nunes's open statement, opening statement when he attacked Democrats, he attacked the media, and most disgustingly attacked the extraordinary men and women of the State Department and the FBI. What do you